We are recording. Okay, hold on. <coughs> Three, two, one, go. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Security on the In30 Network. This is episode what I think is 95. I'm just going to go with 95. And we're calling it the Internet of Things Vigilantes. And we'll get to that in a few minutes. But first, right on the top of the show, new Twitter follower for everyone to follow, we have Edward Snowden. Yes, the Edward Snowden. You know how I know that? Because he's verified. So let me ask Tom, how does Edward Snowden verify himself? Well, clearly the NSA has verified the Twitter account of Mr. Snowden, and they are very interested in following him. I mean, it, it breaks all sorts of everything. If you ever, if you watch the documentary, he's typing into the code of silence. He has <laughs> he has things hiding around. How did he verify? How did Twitter verify that he is in fact the actual Edward Snowden? <laughs> yeah, there must be a new leaker based out of Twitter. Now, I, I can only hope that, uh, you know, Jack Dorsey and Ev Williams take it upon themselves to find this person and uh, make sure that they're held accountable for leaking those tweets. So, I don't know. I, I found that <laughs> hilariously funny. He, Mr. Edward Snowden has one follower, which is, or following one person, which is the NSA, who also, by the way, is verified. Yeah. Which boggles my mind because hey, I need some. I, I I really want to be verified. I'm a public figure. I definitely, definitely need to be verified. I'm not verified. I wish I were verified. I I'm have. A, I'm a very, very important person. I should be verified. I I have public decorum procedures that I must follow. So that I think makes me a public a public person. So now you can get arguments with uh, Infosec Taylor Swift versus Snowden at Snowden on Twitter. Which is absolutely hilarious. Um, apparently, InfoSec Taylor Swift uh, took a picture of a VIP pass to a Taylor Swift concert and said, Hey, Snowden, I'll keep a pass waiting for you. To which he replied, Nice try, FBI. <laughs> this is just fantastic. So I, I, I'm telling you, this is, if you need something to do, this is, here you go. You have two people that are constantly make your life fun. Oh, yeah. So anyway, it brings us to our main topic, which is you, sh you showed us an article on Y Combinator on Hacker News, which took us to Forbes, which is a different story. But some random group of people are securing people's routers by hacking into them. Yes, yes. Uh, I guess that these people went around uh, on the Internet, found routers, found, uh, you know, wireless access points, just basically found a bunch of internet connected devices with weak passwords or no authentication to get in Telnet or you know, just a, a bunch of authentication methods that they haven't released all of the data for. Uh, just to break in, stop malware, stop, you know, a botnet of Bitcoin miners and lock down the systems to make them more secure. There were hackers that broke into devices. Eh, the devices weren't very well secured, but they broke into these devices with the express intention of shutting down malware and keeping people safer. And InfoSec uh, Batman. And uh, is this a Twitter account at InfoSec Batman or no? I, uh, you know, I don't know. If not, it should be. So, well, and you're ju you're just referencing the fact that this is what Batman did. Yes, yeah. It, these are uh, infosec vigilantes. They, what they did, is one hundred percent illegal in the vast majority of the world. Right? If they got caught, they could totally go to jail for breaking into people's computers. Just like you know, Batman, Batman would go to jail if he were caught by police. Um, but uh, you know, they they did it because they are chaotic good. They did it with the express intention of making us safer. I mean, the idea is that nobody just goes out and does good things gen in general. But they, but every once in a while, there is some good in the world, and things like this happen. Right. So it's very hard to legislate. You can only hack if you're doing good, but what define good and everything else? So hacking is now technically illegal. You're not allowed to do this. I bet yeah. you just violate so many D DMCA orders on the routers. Oh yeah, uh, it's this is going to be you know well it's probably not breaking copyright per se, depending on where they're breaking into, uh, but definitely breaking the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act, at least in the states. 
Um, and I'm not familiar enough with international law uh, to, to comment on other countries' jurisdictions. But Apparently uh, the U.S., from what I'm hearing, the U.S. has the worst when it comes to uh, uh, security laws. It's Europe is much stronger and everything else. Yeah. So, but yeah, it definitely under U.S. law, they would be facing either heavy penalties or jail time. Probably jail time, given the, you know, the, the most uh, widespread nature of this hack. Well, yeah, yeah. So I mean, it wasn't one or two devices. This was thousands of devices. This was enough devices that Symantec went, huh? Uh, something is infecting these routers. Something is breaking into these devices, booting out the malware, and then locking them down so no other malware can take over. Uh, it was it was loud enough and it was uh, it was widespread enough that security researchers caught on rather quickly uh, and analyzed what the malware was doing. Um, I hate to call it malware because it's not malicious. It's not doing anything bad other than accessing your device that you failed to secure without your authorization, but that's really the only bad thing it's doing. Well, let, let, let me throw you the softball question, which is how do we know, like how do we really know? Like the README says this is good. How do we know that they're not putting a backdoor? Right, well, okay, so the code, the code was released today because these people calling themselves the white team um, released uh, not 100% of the code. They didn't release, you know, hey, this is how we broke into everything. They released hey, this is what we did. This is the function of the code, not necessarily the way it got into things. Um, before that, Symantec and other security firms started to research this. They broke down the binary. They did some reverse engineering. Um, and they could tell by watching these devices what it was doing. Um, when it comes to malware that's not, uh, or really any software that's not obfuscated, that's not purposefully... Uh, leading a researcher astray, you can deconstruct it. You can try to figure out what it's doing. Uh, some malware is very sneaky in which it'll try to look like it's doing one thing and do something completely different. This was not built in that way. Uh, this was something that was built with a very specific intention uh, and was really opaque about what it was doing. It was right there, right out in the open. It just seems like, I mean, look, there's always good stories like this, but you're infecting, I don't know, 10,000 routers. That can be that can be used as a pretty big botnet. Oh, yeah. With a, li with, with a little, little arbitrary line of code, you can definitely mm -hmm. push a lots of sites offline with that. So, yes. So these people, going back to the Batman analogy, these people do have to worry. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, no, they, they losing their anonymity would be tragic. Uh, not just for them, uh, but for us too, because they have claimed that, hey, you know, this is really just one step in a long process of trying to make the internet a safer place. Uh, they do have more targets. They do have more things to break into. Uh, it probably won't be announced. No one's going to come out and, you know, hold a, a giant flag and run commercials on TV and put out a Super Bowl ad about, hey, tonight we're hacking your router to make you safer. Uh, it'll just happen, and we'll find out about it after the fact. Uh, but, yeah, it's it would be very important for these people to lay low, to remain safe, uh, and to try not to make too much noise. At least, uh, you know, with their own name attached. I mean, I, I mean, this is this is a really hard comparison to make. But you have these people here who are updating people's routers to be more secure, and then you have these new types of routers, like the Google, what is it, the OnHub, that will automatically update with different things. These self-automatic right. things almost sound like we're trusting a company, which we do trust, to update our software for us and not to put bad stuff in. Yeah, but I mean, we do that today with with everything else. Lots of stuff. I mean, we do it with all of our operating systems. I know, you know, on on my particular Linux system, um, on on this one that I'm on right now, I like to run the updates by hand because this is my main machine, and I don't want things breaking, you know, at an inopportune time. The laptop sitting next to me, it's on. The laptop sitting out in you know this room over here, it's on, and they're configured to run automatic updates every night pulls down the updates, installs everything automatically, 
and reboots if necessary. Um, I, no I, trust, one goes, yeah. I trust the Debian project with that. I trust you know Microsoft to take care of Windows. Less so today, but I'm sure that's a future episode. Uh, and I trust Apple to take care of OS X. I trust Google to take care of Android, Apple to take care of iOS, and so on and so forth. Uh, but yeah, we trust a lot of companies and a lot of groups to not do anything that would harm us. I wonder. I wonder if this would be a business model where you have like a couple of IT guys who are writing, give us access. And I'm not saying this is the right answer, but I can see, hey, uh, like, I, dare I say geek squad it. Here's a group of individuals. We will update your things for you. You don't have to worry about it. We will make sure your Windows box gets patched every Tuesday. We'll remote in. We'll make sure your everything is up to date. I wonder if this is, this is horrible, horrible for security, but I wonder if this is a good business model. It's actually pretty great for security, depending on who does it. Uh, what you've just described is the managed IT services industry, uh, where companies, okay. especially small businesses, can you know hand over a, a wad of cash to you know a guy or a group of guys or a giant multinational conglomerate and say, "Look, I don't computer. I make pizza." That's what I do, but I need to make sure that you know my customers' credit card numbers aren't getting attacked, and that you know the customers' Wi-Fi here is safe and fast and easy for everyone to use. But I don't know how to do that stuff because I know how to make really good pie, and that's about it. Um, so they hire a managed services company that come in, you know, patch the machines, make sure they're running good software, do any networking, install new hardware. Uh, you can have managed IT service for literally anything, including security. Uh, probably some of the, the biggest names in managed IT services, you know, HP does it, IBM does it, Rackspace um, you know, basically purely exists on managed services in the internet. Uh, Amazon has their own managed suite that they can sell you. Uh, it, for the bigger players, it's definitely not cheap, but if you don't have the expertise in-house, it's really the only option. Well, see, that's the problem. We don't we don't have an in-house, and we don't have money for the expertise. Right. So well, there us, there are uh, many many school systems use managed services, managed IT services. Uh, I know there are several companies here in Ohio uh, that work for school systems managing their infrastructure. Oh yeah, I mean, I mean, th th there there is that, but day to day, I mean, like I said, most. I'm using my computers day to day. No one goes in there and and updates them. Automatic updates would be right. would be a blessing, but for whatever reason, even on automatic updates, things just don't get updated. And I and and because the the updates don't have an admin password, whatever it is, and it drives it drives me crazy. And when you say, "Hey, can you update?" Yeah, sure, we'll get around to it. Yeah, but they never right. do. It's not the top priority of you know most local IT uh, unless they're security minded. Now, as we know, we've talked about this several times. The best way, the number one way to keep yourself protected on the net is when there's an update, you just run the update. You install it. You reboot if it asks. The automatic updates will save your life. And Quite literally, in the case of medical devices, but I don't oh, think yes. any of those automatically update. It's it's one of those things. I just wish that more devices would automatically update. I yeah. mean, I mean, you have Chrome, you have Firefox now, and and both of those still have the <laughs> button where you have to say apply update. You have an update. You need to restart, which used to be where everyone restarted daily. Now you're restarting once a week. That's a lot. Right. So and then you have and then you have but you have other weird things like your car. I mean, your car has more computers than you have in your house. Your TV, your TV yep. never gets something. Your router, you got it. You were probably, you probably had, you probably got stuck on some some security thing, so you disabled all security. You said, you know what, I'll change it later, and you just never got around to it. Yeah, or using you know the same router password that came with the device when you pulled it out of the box. So which it, it's probably admin or password or something equally as inane. I mean, if all they did is switch the IP address, it's what not one ninety two. When I, I'm forgetting it. When I need to, 168.0.1.1, that would have been a little bit better. But anyway, so I would love for things to automatically update. 
to the point that I don't even have to agree to it. I, I'd rather opt out of an automatic update than to opt into it. So that's me. I, I agree. I, I think that, you know, as, as we've seen in a law or computers or really anything that has to do with embedded defaults, um, defaults can save lives. Uh, in countries where uh, people have to opt out of being an organ donor, um, the, the shortages are far less because there are more organ donors. There's more of a pool. Um, when it comes to software, you know, uh, having someone, you know, opt out of really nasty tracking or nasty advertising or other things like, uh, you know, Microsoft has been doing with Windows 10, most people aren't going to touch those settings. They're not going to look in that control panel. They don't want to break anything, so they're not going to flip any switches. They're going to stay with the defaults. And I agree. Automatic updates should be a default. On Windows, they're a default. I think on OS 10, they're a default. Uh, yes. Linux distributions, uh, I know Ubuntu will automatically prompt and download updates and say, hey, look, you've got these updates. Uh, on other distributions, uh, I know Mint does. Um, others like Debian, especially Arch, Gentoo, yeah, the more technical Linux distributions will not do automatic updates. Uh, I know for a fact when it comes to cars, uh, my car, when I take it in for an oil change, uh, they actually look at the manufacturer's uh, software update page and they have updated my software before. I know every time they do it because it wipes the radio stations. That's annoying. It is, it, but it keeps things... Uh, my car isn't really connected. The most technical thing it has is it's got an aux port so I can plug my phone into the speakers, and that's about it. Is it in your center console or just on the radio? Center console. Oh, that's the worst. That means, that if, that means if you want to switch the wire, if you have two things, I have two things. Anyway, <laughs> but yeah, the, the idea is that, look, we have these. We, and look, look what's going on. More and more things are actually going this route. But the, the, the really high security things the vectors in are not, and that's really annoying. The baby monitors, your, your, I mean, I don't want to say smart thermostat because it's a relatively new thing. Your light bulbs, who would have thought well, that your light bulb? My, my smart update? thermostat automatically updates. Well, I'm hoping that they start automatically updating. I, I don't, I'm not on the smart thermostat bandwagon yet. I need a third power wire, which I don't have. So I can only look on and, and hope that sooner <laughs> or later, and the link I showed you, that's one of their things that they say, that it has automatic yeah. thermostat. Um, and and so your car, nobody updates their car. I mean, no. you're lucky that when you get the oil change, they do. But that's a thing that generally never gets updated. Your oh, phone yeah. gets updated once a year. I mean, the apps get updated. but Yeah, the apps get updated. And the base OS probably never. Usually once. But after that, no. You're, you're stuck. So let's go back. So we talked a long about enough long. We've talked long enough about this, but let's talk back about the guy. So I guess did they talk about it, like his motivation other than like you and I wouldn't do this. We would just sit here for half an hour once a week and say, "Hey, everyone, listen to us and upgrade it." Why would he like go on and and like do this? So on the Forbes article, which we will link in the show notes, um, they said, you know, as for why, uh, this is a direct quote from Forbes, um, and I should probably mention the author, uh, Thomas Fox Brewster. Uh, he's a uh, digital crime, privacy, and hacker culture writer. Uh, as for why hacking, or uh, hacking team, <laughs> this was not hacking team. Uh, as for why white team decided to create software that appeared to be uh, to have broken the law and breaching the admittedly poor security of people's routers without their permission, the crew or individual, because we don't know, uh, responsible and noted on GitLab where they did release the code. Uh, first for learning, second for understanding, third for fun, and fourth for your and our security. Apart from the learning experience, this is a truly altruistic project and no malicious actions are planned. Um, from the code that we've seen, from you know the analysis that uh, the security researchers have done, I'm inclined to believe them. Um, I'm interested to see what they do next, but uh, yeah, this is, this is interesting. Um, they put all their code under the, uh, the GNU GPL v3 
totally open source. Everyone can share it. Um, you can copy it. You can modify it. You can do whatever you want as long as your code is also open source. Um, you know, it's, uh, they were asked, you know, well, who are you? Uh, and you, know, you should probably be careful about covering your tracks. And I said, oh, we're no one important, really. Well, it sounds, I mean, it goes back to, so they're sitting there, they're saying, hmm, let me see how secure my router is. Oh, it looks pretty secure or really not secure. Let me go somewhere else. Okay, let me check my parents' house. I haven't been there since Thanksgiving. Let me check on their router setting. Wait, this is pretty insecure. Like, I feel like they would play with it, but they would leave there. I, I guess I would never take the next step of, let me write this so that it could go through and find other people's routers. Right. I, I felt like I wouldn't do a, I wouldn't do an automatic thing. I would do a manual type thing. But I guess you know what? I guess that's their project, uh, like some 20% time or they felt <laughs> like doing this. I feel like that's good. That's great for them. Um, I, I hate to to, to kind of try to guess at this um, from – from the README that they put out, from the things that they've they've said to reporters, um, I don't think they are native English speakers. Uh, I'm not going to hazard a guess at you know where they're at, um, but I, I would guess that they're not that English is not their first language. Um, but you know, I, the hacker culture knows no cultural bounds. People are hackers are you know, curious. They're interested in stuff. They want to see how far they can take something. Uh, this has got hacker culture written all over it uh, with, you know, a healthy dose of altruism. It's the, it's, and the problem is, well, this is a good thing. We, if, if we showed this article to people, we just left it. If the, the 11 o'clock news picked this up, you're going to hear how horrible this guy did. You're not going to hear anything positive. You're going to hear this hacker is hacking into your routers and making them secure. Is it really secure? Question mark. And that—that's <laughs> sort of what bothers me a little bit. Yeah. Is I understand. I people are trying to do good, and we treat hackers as this evil thing, as this evil, evil thing. I was explaining to someone what DefCon was. How I went to DefCon, they said, "Oh, you're hacking things," and I said, "Yeah, we're not hacking things, but you're telling people how to do bad things." And I said, "Yeah, we're telling them that it exists, hoping that it gets fixed at some point." Right, because if they were going to do bad things, they would have found it anyway. So oh, here's, yeah. this guy, here's this guy. He's instead of instead of saluting him and saying, "Let's get some positive news stories." Hey, if you're trying to do the right thing, we're willing to help. Don't do the bad thing because if you do the bad thing, we're really going to throw the profit. But if you're going to do the good thing, we want to support you. I think legally it would be dubious. Now you know in the infosec community in the hacking community, it's. Yeah, just speaking from Twitter, um, it's pretty clear cut and dry that most people are supporting oh. this group or individual. They're they're supporting uh, white team and saying, yeah, they they did the right thing. The thing that you know, uh, people who are known in the security community couldn't do for fear of legal repercussion. You know, having an infosec Batman uh, is not a bad thing, uh, at least right now, but. Yes. Yeah. And you know, can can we trust well, you this do person? Want people uh, he trust even uh, he I, I they uh, even say uh, you know in their frequently asked questions here in their Q and A in the readme, uh, they say, "Can I trust you not to do evil things with my devices?" Uh, they reply, as a matter of fact, yes. But that is of no practical help. Someone could steal the botnet key, no matter how well I protect it, and software is never perfect. Chances are there's a bug in the code that allows access to anybody, even though multiple researchers tried but failed to find one. And in the end, it's a common trick by fraudsters to assure people that they are trustworthy. Uh, the next question, should I trust you? Their answer, no. Uh, this does not mean that we don't promise to you know, do horrible, bad things. I'm paraphrasing. Uh, it means you should not rely on us to keep you safe because we might not be able to. Uh, they're saying, look, you know, don't trust us. <laughs> we cannot be your first and last line of defense. The real defense, the real way to protect yourself is to secure your devices.
No, the people no, that no this idea. is happening to, they probably have absolutely no these idea. These are what's people, and they they might be. I, I don't want to paint the the users as you know dumb or idiots or technically illiterate because, let's be honest, how it, if I wasn't running PF Sense, you know, <laughs> I know when it, even when I was running uh, Open WRT on my old Linksys router, I was not going out and grabbing firmware updates every month. No, it was like once every three to six, if that, uh, and even less so before that. When you're running a stock, you know, wireless access point, and you go and pick off the shelf at Best Buy. How often do you update your routers? It's hardly ever, right? I mean, I mean, we were talking about PF Sense for me, and I was thinking, oh, my router is pretty new. And I was trying yeah. to test something, and I realized my router is oh, yeah. probably because it, it just works. But the the thing people have point. to keep in mind, no and one thinks about it. the thing, and, the security community does an awful job at teaching people. You know, we we can hammer on Windows updates and password managers all day long. The first line of people's defense are their home router, and we're not hammering hard enough on people saying, "Look, you got to keep these updated because this this right here is your gateway to the world." And if it's not up to snuff, people can walk right through your front door. It's like leaving it unlocked and open, and your purse is yeah you know, right in the car. I mean, we heard about this with the baby monitors a few weeks ago, where and I say a few weeks ago because I hear about it every few weeks. Somebody ran yep. the entire space of all the IPs, found a whole bunch of baby monitors, and you can go to the website baby monitors dot whatever. And you can see the baby monitors that are on, and people get outraged. It goes on Facebook right. for about no three one takes hours, the device offline. No one puts no it behind a firewall. They're about. just sort of there. Um, I mean, I turn mine off. I'm I'm behind the router, but I turn mine off when I'm actively not using it. When I know that I don't need it, because at the end of the day. Again, this is a parenting thing, so I'm going to get hate mail for this. You know when your baby's sleeping, and you know when they're awake. And if you're going outside, leaving your baby in the house, the monitor is a good idea. But if you're in the house, for me, right. I don't necessarily have a reason. For I, I know there, I live there are situations yeah, when I was growing house. up in uh, you know bigger, I turn things sometimes off, gigantic like, houses there. where a baby monitor was utterly necessary because you know it's half a neighborhood away is the kid's room. Yes. So, but again, if you're not using it, right. turn it off. And they are but we use always our, We use attacked. our routers 24 hours a day. Um, They're always I, I know on. a lot of people don't, you know, yes, sit around and watch their router logs all day. But if if you want to know something and, and you want to scare yourself a little bit, um, if you have the ability to turn on logging and, uh, you know, put it on a nice password uh, and, and, you know, watch your logs, watch to see how many things you're trying to hit SSH or a web interface, uh, it's kind of ridiculous. Um, but no, it's it's targeting everything. They and can by touch. the way, no they're not targeting particularly you. saying, ah, that Bob guy, I'm going to hack him because he's a bad guy or I just don't like him or he doesn't make pizza good enough. No, they're, they're going out and doing a scan of the net and saying, ah, there's a device here at this address. Let me try to hammer on it with these common protocols, these common usernames, and these common passwords, and see if I get a hit. And if I get a hit, I'll add it to the botnet and move on to the next one. It's nothing personal. It's you're on the internet and you're a potential target, so they're going to try to exploit you. Uh, the one thing that listeners of this show should take away is go to your router manufacturer's webpage, type in the model number. It's probably somewhere on the bottom of the router. Type it in. Uh, or even go to go to Google and type in you know uh, you know Linksys model whatever it says on the bottom firmware hit enter and go to Linksys website and update that thing and uh, you know, set a reminder uh, a lot of the nicer routers will do automatic updates if you have that feature I haven't seen a lot of them that do uh, but if you have the feature please just turn it on and ignore it it's one less thing you have to worry about. Yeah. It's actually a good topic for a whole other show. Just router security. All these other things. We should do that one day. But anyway, with that, we will leave you because we are at the 30 minute mark. So 
as Top said, I would absolutely go now, check your so route you guys, somewhere, and and you know what? We'll just 